I got the curry sweats right now. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings, everybody. Welcome to Prop 3D Season 2. I'm Bill, and we're joined today by a very special guest. Bindi Small. You know her as Bindi Small. She's <laughs> a 3D printing specialist and cosplayer. My favorite kind of people. Yeah. Joining us in the shop today, and we've got a plethora of your things here. We do. I, I brought a bunch of stuff this weekend uh, to show off and both kind of work on because I have an upcoming deadline. Uh, but I brought a few different types of methods of fabricating stuff with 3D printing. So I brought something that's new and interesting. Um, Very cool. All Overwatch stuff too, All right? Overwatch right now, yes. yes. It's kind of an obsession. Uh, so I brought a shoe that I've recently printed out of NinjaFlex. Yeah, and, um, and that's a, like a rubber, basically. Yes, it yeah. is a thermoplastic elastomer. Um, so NinjaFlex is, as you can see, it's kind of kind of squishy, but the beauty of NinjaFlex is that it doesn't break. Um, you can crumple it completely. Yeah. I was impressed with how just how uh, strenuous you were. Yeah. Perfect! Yay! <laughs> now what, did, what machine was that printed on? This was printed on a Lulzbot Taz 5 with a flex extruder. Okay, so, so you do need a specific type of extruder for it? Um, not always. It really depends. Okay. It really depends on the type of 3D printer you have. Gotcha. Um, but I did notice that the flex extruder printed NinjaFlex the best I've ever seen. That's really cool. It has a special addition to the uh, extruder body that helps it print uh, NinjaFlex reliably. Um, and that has to do with the way it pushes NinjaFlex through the hot end. Gotcha. But that's, I mean, you guys have done a lot of experimenting because yes. you have what, 11 printers now? I have 11 yes. printers, yes. <laughs> I've only got. Uh, we had six in the shop yesterday, but uh, I only have a handful myself I'm still working my way to that level. Uh, but yeah, you've experimented to, to figure out what works best to get this particular outcome. Um, yes. Yeah, so or at least on that path. Yes, I've yeah. been I've been printing in NinjaFlex for two years now. Mm -hmm. um, so I've seen my fair share of like what works and what doesn't work um, and how to kind of tweak settings to get better results, things like that. Um, for instance, you can print NinjaFlex with support material, which I didn't realize for a very long time. Wow. Um, so like overhangs, like say here on the arch of the foot, uh, you can print NinjaFlex under with, with support material under there. Mm -hmm. You just have to take it off with a pair of pliers yep. because it's stretchy and you have to really gotcha. pull at it. And there's some still in the toe, There's right? some still in here. Yeah. I don't know how I, I can It'd be it. hard to, to see, but there is a little bit of material inside. Way in yeah, there. it's kind of hard to see. So, very cool. All right, let's move on. Okay. Uh, so these pieces over here, Done in a similar manner with a different material. Similar manner, different material, same machine. Okay. So these were all printed on uh, the Wellspot Test 5 as well. Um, but this is just PLA, uh, a PLA type material. This is PLA Plus by eSun. It's a PLA with an additive to make it a little stronger. Um, so the underside, you can see where all the support material was touching. Uh, and these are all coated with, I think, their second coat of Rust Oleum filler primer to help fill in all the visible layer height. Uh, which then you sand down, spray, sand down, spray. Yep, yep. The repeating process. Um, and this was, I originally developed this model to be printed in NinjaFlex. Um, but at the last minute, I made the choice to print it in PLA so that I can cast it in a flexible material instead. Mm -hmm. um, because and it I has wanted a little... It. Yeah, there's a little bit of give in the PLA, but the PLA itself wouldn't be a, a good wearable because it would be very stiff. And this is your neck. <laughs> be like a, like a neck corset and that'd yeah. be terrible. Um, so... In the meantime, I'm sanding it and we'll be working on that. And this is another piece off the same thing. So this yep. goes right in front of the of the neck, uh, about yeah. And uh, it's also going to be cast in flexible as well. It goes along the collarbone. And which character is this? This is Diva from That's Overwatch. Right. From the Overwatch cool. game. All right, and then the one I'm probably the most excited about these pieces these. right here. So. Um, I have been playing around with one of my newest printers, the Form Labs Form 2, for a little while, and I haven't really utilized it for cosplay stuff. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of action figures, I've done a lot of uh, tiny movie replicas of things, of props and things like that. Um, but then I realized if I can get away with printing something on the form and have mm -hmm. it turn out perfectly, uh, then I can cast it yes. and save myself lots and lots of finishing time. So these are Diva's shoulders uh, from Diva of Overwatch. And they go like th like this, and uh, these were printed on the form and just sprayed with a coat of filler primer. They haven't been sanded yet. Nope, That's and they are ridiculous. absolutely perfect. <laughs> um, so, so you'll notice on the backside, uh, you can show the camera. There's a little, you can see like little dots where the support material 
was uh, was holding on to the piece. So these printed um, like this. They're essentially lifted out of a vat of resin right. with support material on top. And uh, yeah, they turned out pretty much perfect. There's really not much finishing work I have to do at all. And that's just uh, that's just how awesome that printer is. It's a wonderful machine. How long did each one of those take to print? I want to say each one took about 15 or 16 hours. Mm -hmm. This was done on the highest resolution setting. Yep. Yep. So it took a little while, but the results are worth it. They do speak for themselves. They could. Well, that's really cool. Uh, this is all super exciting stuff. Um, it's been uh, really fun playing uh, and learning about 3D printing with you guys. Awesome. If people want to follow your stuff, learn more about 3D printing, check out what you're working on, where should they go? They should go to my main Facebook fan page, which is uh, facebook.com slash bindycosplay. They can also t check out my Twitch stream, uh, which is twitch.tv slash bindysmalls. I work on all this stuff on stream live, so you can always go and ask me questions and I'm more than willing to answer. Uh, I've been working on all of these pieces live on stream this week. So. Very cool, lots of sanding? Lots and lots of lots sanding. Lots of sanding, <laughs> yes, which gives you plenty of time to interact with people plenty, and chat. Plenty, plenty of time. While you're working on everything. <laughs> well, fantastic, thank you so much for sharing all this wonderful stuff with you. I'm looking forward to seeing this stuff get finished. Yes. Um, which ones are are you going to be wearing? Oh my goodness, I'll be wearing these. Very good. For Dragon Con. Okay. And, not, um, not Genji? Not Genji. My partner in crime, Mighty Socks, will be wearing the right. Genji helmet. We might, uh, here, I got to showcase that there too. <laughs> Very cool. Awesome. Uh, well, fantastic. It's been a pleasure hanging out. Thank you for having me. Look for more from uh, Bindi Smalls. And we'll see you guys in the next episode of Prop3D. Bye. Bye.